Good evening. It is Tuesday, August the 21st, a little after 9 p.m. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson with Weatherflow, bringing you a wind wave and weather forecast for the Surfers Healing Event, Folly Beach, this Thursday, August the 23rd, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. I did a preliminary forecast last night. Now it's Tuesday. We're getting a little closer in time, so things look a little bit more exact. We still have a little bit to talk about Thursday morning with the winds and the weather, and uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. But I definitely want to sort of zoom in on Folly Beach and show you where the event's going to be. For those of you who aren't aware uh, what Surfers Healing is, it is for autism awareness and uh, those on the spectrum. And we get kids out on the boards with professional surfers that have donated their time. They're from all over the world. They come with founder Izzy Paskowitz. Nancy Hussey runs the Folly Beach chapter every single year. She's been doing it for over a decade and just does a great job. And this is where all the tents and the activity are going to be going on in front of the tides right next to the pier. All the surfing goes on out here. It's one perfect day. It's an amazing event. And I encourage you to come if you've never seen it before. It's just amazing. All the smiles and the happiness that you see, the tears and everything that goes along with it. It's just a wonderful event. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what's going to be happening for the weather. And uh you know, we talked a little bit about last night about an area of low pressure that was going to be going up across the Great Lakes towards the northeast United States. That is on track. Here comes the cold front that's going to be approaching our coast tomorrow. It should get just along the coastline tomorrow night, and hopefully we'll get it to clear by tomorrow by Thursday morning. But we're going to, we may see a pretty stormy afternoon and evening tomorrow night. We're going to see some pretty strong sea breezes coming up from the south and south-southwest tomorrow afternoon somewhere between 14 to 18 knots. And then as on track, we have this Canadian high dropping down across the Midwestern United States. And that's going to be bringing down a northerly flow down behind this boundary, maybe even northeast. So if this boundary gets just off the coastline, we may be starting to see a north-northeast or maybe even a northeast flow filling in as the day goes on. We'll look at the model runs for that in just a minute. But that's sort of what the big picture is on the surface map. Here we go with the rain. This is uh, Wednesday at noon, and I'm going to go ahead and start at the hour 22, and, uh, and I'll go forward. And as we go into time, we see Wednesday uh, evening around 7 o'clock p.m., we see the storm sort of building along the coastline and then fizzling out. And then we see one more wave early morning hours as the cold front goes through. That's usually the weaker of the storming and the rain. And then by, that's at 4 o'clock a.m. in the morning Thursday, and then by the time we get to 6 a.m., 7, 8 o'clock a.m., it looks like high pressure is filling in behind. And this is just one of the model runs, one of the higher resolution model runs, uh, which is a good sign because it shows that uh, most of the rain is going to be sort of fizzling out or moving off the coastline. Now, if we get a little short wave off the coast, sometimes we get a little bit of a low right here parked along the, the tail end of the boundary or, or portion of the boundary. And that could kick in a little bit of shower activity Thursday morning. Some of the models are hinting towards that. And that can be driven in by northeast winds as well. So we may have a chance for an isolated shower or two. I don't think storms are going to be in the mix by that time because the air is going to be drying out behind it. And uh, it's also going to be cooler and more condensed air. So it doesn't really necessarily give any more thunderstorms at that point. Those are going to be sticking offshore. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Datascope. Uh, this is our Weatherflow product. And right now we're seeing uh, some pretty strong nocturnal jetting, 19 knots, gusting to about 23 knots. And uh, this is going to continue for a pretty good amount of time tonight because of this cold front approach from the west. And uh, we'll see this sort of continue. It may fizzle out at some point around 10 to midnight and then maybe come back up around 4 or 5. And then we see a pretty good build for tomorrow. Uh, let's go ahead and um, take a look at the model runs. Let me zoom in on this so we can see it better. And uh, it looks like the winds here for tomorrow... Uh, if you're already in town, you're going to see some pretty strong sea breezing tomorrow afternoon. The models are a little bit up and down on the speeds, but I think we're going to see the higher end of this about 14, 18 knots. Now, as we get into Thursday morning, you see the winds start to switch. They go west at about 2 a.m., and then they start to go north at about 8 o'clock a.m. This is the zone that I'm watching right here, uh, this time zone between 8 a.m. and I would say 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., because the winds, if they're if north or north-northeast, are going to be offshore at the pier at Folly Beach, which means the waves will be clean. Uh, and that's what we want. We want glassy waves. But as we start to go in time, we see a little bit more of a lean to the northeast. And that's when the winds can start to cut inside like a sideshore wind and get a little bit choppy. We might be looking at some choppy 
waves by maybe early to mid afternoon that may hold off until a little bit a little bit later till maybe after four when the winds really lean into the coastline and uh, that may start to give a little bit of bump on the swell so if we go down below and we look at the uh, the quick look plus on this and we, we kind of go forward to Thursday morning it's showing this this particular model run is showing two feet on the wave heights and you can see the wind starting to turn a little bit northeast by 11 a.m. however I'm not entirely convinced of that because it really depends on the timing of the high pressure and uh, that may not happen until Friday when winds are really going to kind of ramp up uh, so if we go to the wave watch model I definitely want to check in on this this is what a lot of surfers watch is the uh, wave watch model and this one's actually showing three feet from the east southeast and then as we get to 2 p.m. we see the wind swell uh, we see the swell sort of coming in from a different direction at three feet because of that northeast wedge working down. Uh, now this this does have the winds coming up earlier, 19 knots by 11 a.m. So this is going to be the close call. This is going to be what we have to really watch for is the winds picking up and creating a lot of chop on the waves. If it stays offshore, we get glassier waves. If it starts to lean onshore, it gets a little bit windier, and then the winds then the the waves get a little bit choppy. But either way. I think we're good on the storms. We don't have to worry about that too much. We have a little stray shower or two in the morning, and then um, we'll go from there. As far as radar right now for Charleston, uh, for those who are wanting to know what's going on right here at the moment, we have a little bit of rain activity, some shower activity with a, an isolated storm popping up just south of Walterboro. We have some um, storms uh, drifting downslope uh, from Anderson over from west to east, uh, and then uh, we may see more of this activity tomorrow night. So uh, if you're in town tomorrow night, you're staying, be prepared to see some thunderstorms. Maybe even see a light show from some lightning tomorrow night. So hopefully it doesn't uh, uh, get those on the beach because I know there's a movie planned. Uh, we'll have to watch radar for that throughout the day. But other than that, I think we're going to be good to go. Um, I'm not going to back off from my forecast uh, last night and saying that the, the weather was going to cooperate. And as far as the jellyfish, all the sting activity... The chatter has sort of calmed down a lot. I haven't heard very much at all from stings out in the ocean. I think most of the jellyfish activity has sort of moved on. It was sort of in a warm wave with some mixing waters. I think we're going to be good to go. So um, uh, as it stands, it looks like uh, the only things we got to really watch for is the wind. I think we're going to be okay. And other than that, I will be back on tomorrow for another update. And until then, everyone take care, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.